Hi, Mike Archer here. Jeff Jacobs down there, and we just finished shooting our very first episode of All Miked Up. First guest was Larry Vaught, the legendary sports writer. And how'd you think it went, Jeff? I thought it went great. It was good to have him on for a very... That's a pretty good guest to have on for the first time and told a few stories and got his insight. And uh, it was so good, I think we're going to run two episodes of it. Two episodes, Larry Vaught. More stories. He's probably forgotten more about sports, certainly UK sports, than any of us will ever know. And he told a very, very interesting story about none other than... Dan Dockich. A personal who's, favorite of this guy right here. Who's that? Well, we're going to find out. So without further ado, uh, let's meet Larry Vaught. Greetings. Mike Archer here. This is Main Street Media Television, and uh, this is the all mic'd up uh, segment of the station. Larry Vaught is my first guest, the legendary Larry Vaught. How are you, Larry? I'm great. Yeah. Yeah. A little pressure on there, but that's good. Jeff Jacobs is off the camera right now. He is, though. He does have a microphone. He will be adding his two cents wherever necessary. Yes. Uh, how you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good, and yes, I will. I'm excited about this. This is great, Larry. Thank you for coming in. This, this is why I'm excited. Okay, you ready? Don't blush over there. Seven-time winner of the Kentucky Sports Sports Writer of the Year Award. University of Kentucky Sports since 1975. You're on over 30 newspapers and websites across the state. High school, I like this one. you got to tell us about this. A member of the Kentucky High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Is that for athletics or for your skills <laughs> as the writer? No, it, it is. We'll just say it is not for athletics. <laughs> Very good. And finally, this is really cool. Um, you helped found the, uh, you actually helped found the Kentucky Sports Writer Association and help start Mr. Football. That that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I did enjoy doing that. Yeah. What year are we talking? Uh, first Mr. Football. Back in the uh, late '80s, I believe it was. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> yeah, right. You wish you weren't born yet. <laughs> that's true. You were only 23 then. <laughs> What else you got over there, Jeff? Well, uh, do, you, do you need more? What, oh, well, you, I, I, you look like you're reading something, so I thought you would want to add that. Again, I, that disembodied voice, that's Jeff Jacobs. Uh, what, what would you call yourself, the producer, the all-around good guy? I've said this before, the guy who paid for the microphones well, the guy, at this point. So, yeah. The but guy that no, paid for the microphones. I'm just, um, I'm just a guy off in the corner, usually in your seat, but uh, – uh, we are obviously being COVID friendly here and uh, so excited to have Larry with us today and uh, decided this is how we'll do things. Well, whether it's COVID or not, I, I'd like to keep at least six feet between myself and Larry at all times. All right, Larry Vaught, first, first thing, uh, very simple question. Uh, how in the world did you get started as a sports writer? Oh, that, that, that's an easy one. I've always just liked to read and write. Yes. And so I worked at the newspaper a little bit even when I was in uh, high school. But I've Which newspaper are we talking? We're talking about the one in Danville. Danville Advocate Messenger. Wow. Was it the Advocate Messenger then as yes, well? Yes, it was okay. the Advocate Messenger then. Very good. But I was also a, I've been involved with the newspaper business since I was eight years old. In what capacity? I delivered papers when I was eight. Gotcha. Wow. I had a route of about 137 papers, Put got on my bike, slung them over my shoulder, and went and threw them on the porches and tried not to break uh, glass doors, which now happens did, a few times. That cuts into the profit margin at thirty cents a week. Sure, sure. Did you did you know at that point this is what you want to do, or was it just literally a job at that point? It was just a job at yeah. that point. I mean, sure. my, my, my dad had worked at the newspaper, and so I, I, I dabbled around when, and with writing some. And when I first came out of school, I was a business major mm. because at that time at UK to be a journalism major, you had to take twelve hours of foreign language. And I couldn't see seriously. Any, I couldn't see any reason at all to spend ten percent of my college time taking foreign language. So I was a business major, and then took uh, well, my extra subjects I could take my electives. I took those in journalism. So when I came out, I thought, well, maybe I'll try the business world. And so I tried it for about nine months, and decided ah, if I'm going to work all these hours, I might as well be working the hours and do something that I enjoy yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Even though it took me about, I think. 13 years when I came back to the newspaper to make what I was making after nine months in the business world. That's a, that's a labor of love. <laughs> it, it, it is. A, uh, and, 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 and nobody writes to, it's not like musicians yeah. that make a huge amount of money. Newspaper writers, you don't, you don't make a lot. You make enough to live a nice life, but you're not going to get rich and have which, homes in three states. Or which anything. musicians are you talking about? <laughs> so how many, how many years were you at the paper, the Danville Advocate Messenger? I was at the newspaper full time for 41. I actually started out covering, uh, I was a halftime sports writer and a halftime just writer for the paper. So two of my 
first assignments for the Bergen City Council and Houstonville City Council. How'd you end up with uh, UK Sports? Just I thought same that way? was something that would, uh, would en enhance the newspaper sports page a lot. So that was your idea. You were the genesis of that. Well, I had to push to be able to do it because they weren't going to take anything else off my plate. But I also knew if I was ever going to, you know, kind of get my name out there any. It was going to be more for what I could do for UK sports than just local sports. In the years that you covered high school sports, now, now speaking as a former athlete myself, uh, that's a big deal because uh, the athletes, we, we read that stuff. Parents read that stuff, families and, and such. Um, How has it changed over the years that you've covered uh, high school sports, uh, whether it be uh, the athletes themselves or the games themselves or anything in particular you can think of? I don't think it's changed a lot other than there are just more sports now. Okay. I mean, I was working at the newspaper when girls basketball started. Mm -hmm. I was working there when we first had high school soccer. I've been around for a, a lot of the things that, that started off like that, and I kind of took the uh, pride in wanting to get out and cover a lot of female high school sports because there were a lot of sports writers, and to be honest, still are, that don't really enjoy covering female sports. Right. I'm not exactly sure why, because one lesson my dad taught me was that there are no minor sports to the people involved in them. Absolutely. Amen. And I yeah. always tried to remember that. With your VoughtsViews.com, you don't just cover men's sports. You also yeah. cover the, the women's sports. Go back to when you first started writing. What was the big first piece where you thought to yourself, okay, I made it? Probably the first time that I can remember that I thought, well, my UK stuff's being paid attention to is when Joe Hall called me to uh, chew me out about something and then made, <laughs> made the same point in, uh, in practice, which at that time he let you come to practice, made the same point in practice that he didn't really agree with something that I had written. I thought, well, you know, it's nice to know that he, he's reading. I'm interested in technology. Did is it make your life as a broad as a writer? Is it make it easier, harder? I mean, back in the old days, were you on a computer or did you start with a typewriter? I mean, seriously. <laughs> I started with a typewriter. I, I figured, a, a, yeah. A line of type machines. Yeah. At, at the newspaper, I mean, Mike wouldn't know what a line of type machine. No, is. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you have to do things. I mean, I I would go to. Uh, games with a portable typewriter yeah. and, and have to call the story back in, read it word for word. I can remember the first dream game. You would like this down in, down in Knoxville. See, see, these are the kind of things I remember. First, first dream trivia. game. Between Kentucky and Louisville. Kentucky and Louisville. Oh. Yeah. And they haven't played fair. And we're down in Knoxville. It's a great game. Goes to overtime. Louisville wins. I got my little portable typewriter and the uh, computers that just came out, the, the laptops, radio shacks and all, but the newspaper here hadn't bought one yet. So I'm banging around, <laughs> typing my story. All the power goes off in Thompson Bowling Arena. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever because everybody that had a laptop, it didn't store anything. When it goes off, it's gone. And there's no way to there's wow. no way for them to get back on. And they're all going going nuts. And I'm just sitting there hitting my keys as hard as I can That's hit awesome. them then. Yeah. And I also but yeah, so I, I went from that stage to I mean, I remember I thought the greatest invention that mankind had ever known was the fax machine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I thought when you could fax a story you were gonna send somewhere or somebody could fax you stats, I thought, you know, my life could never ever be any easier. <laughs> and, and here we are. And then when the stuff came with the internet, if you'd ever told me I'd been on Twitter and doing blogs and do you miss and, the good old days or is this better really? Well, I, I miss it a lot because it used to be when you got through with work, you were through. Now you're never through because anything can happen and you're expected to be back to. So not so much for me the last few years, but for a lot of years you just were never off and you just had to always be on call because something was always breaking. And now, as soon as you put something online, you know, and ten minutes later, it's old.